to magnify your name. I press my way because I need you. I press my way because of who you are. And our expectation is to see you, Lord God. Our expectation is to bless you. Our expectation is that you're going to save souls. Our expectation is somebody going to be delivered. Our expectation is my children is coming out on this praise. Our expectation is my body is delivered on this praise. My expectation is the word that's going to come forth. It's going to break some yokes and destroy some generational curses. That's my expectation. And so, Lord, I bless you. The Lord is my pillar. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my pillar. The Lord is my fortress. That means he's my solid rock. He's the one I can trust in. He doesn't move. He doesn't shake. God, you've been our everything. Lord, you've been our all. Lord, you've been our everything. You've been our strength and our shield and our buckler. God, when everything else in life seems to sway and go back and forth, when people change, you just don't change. You're consistent. Hallelujah. You're so faithful. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord says, Lord, it's my pillar, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my God, in whom I take refuge. Oh, yeah. The Lord is my pillar, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, and my rock. Whom I take refuge, yeah. He is my shield, hallelujah. And the heart of my salvation. He is my shield, yes, he is. And the heart of my salvation. He is my shield. And the heart of my salvation. He's my shield. Thank you. 
worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. The blood still works. Come on, if you know it works, take about 20 more seconds and clap your hands. The blood still works. Come on, y'all, this is what we do on Saturday night. The blood still works. It's still working in my life. It's still working in your life. It's still working in your children and your family. I said the blood still works. Oh, yes, it works. The blood still works. The blood still works. Bring it down, bring it down. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. We're getting ready to partake of our Holy Communion. Right here, right now. This is a moment of celebration. I'll say that again. This is a moment of celebration. Because of what Jesus did, we didn't have to. Because of what Jesus endured, we don't have to. Because of where Jesus went, we ain't got to go. Come on, somebody just say he did it for me. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 11, 23. And I'm going to just start reading right here. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do and remembers of me. After the same manner also he took cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the sacraments are already blessed. We thank you for your body and your blood, God. We thank you, God, for everything that you did on Calvary's cross. And we thank you for yet your blood still working in our life right now. So in this moment, we celebrate you, God. We lift you up and we magnify you. We take this bread and we break it. Come on, everybody, take your bread. it works. Oh, yes, it works. Come on, if you know it works, just begin to celebrate Jesus right now. Clap your hands, all you people. Clap like the devil's in between them. Clap like you know you already got the victory. And bless the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. for your presence. Those of you that are out there watching, we ask that you like, you share. Those of you that are on social media, you can check in right now and say that I am at Kingdom Community Church Saturday Night Live. Amen. And we honor the Lord for your presence once again. But even the more, we honor the Lord for the presence of God in this place. I said we honor the Lord for the presence of God in this place. Hallelujah, God. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord that know me know I don't preach long at all, but today I got a little bit of a word that I want to go through today. We're going to the book of Esther, going to the book of Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, get the word, get the word, if it's on your phone, get it, if it's in your hand, get it, but whatever you do, don't leave home without it, come on, somebody look at your neighbor and say, don't leave home without it. Thank all of you out there that's watching. Happy Mother's Day weekend to you. 
to every mother in this house, happy Mother's Day to you. To every future mother in this house, happy Mother's Day to you. Every used-to-be mother that's a nana and a, a big mama, a TT, whatever you want to call yourself now, happy Mother's Day to you. Hallelujah. We thank God for you and all of you that are watching. Even if you're not a mother, amen, we honor the Lord for you as well. We're going to the book of Esther, chapter 4, and it's going to read. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. And he came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whether so the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Uh, then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him. But he received it not and then called Esther for Hatak and one of the king's chamberlains whom he had appointed to attend upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. Uh, uh, so Hatak went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city which was before the king's gate and Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasury for the Jews to destroy them. All he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given to Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make requests before him for her people. I'm almost done here. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake to Hatak and gave him commandment unto Mordecai and all the king's servants and and of the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, come unto the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter uh, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. And, and they told to Mordecai Esther's words. And the last two, three verses reads, then Mordecai commanded to Esther, uh, uh, com com commanded to answer Esther, uh, that think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house for more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Uh, I felt good right there. It's going to arise from another place. For thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom uh, for such a time as this. And, and then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather uh, together all the Jews. Come on, somebody say lotty dotty, everybody. Hey, go gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Uh, so Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this opportune time. I thank you, God, for God in my lips. God, decrease me and you increase within me, God. Show yourself mighty and strong. Let something be said that somebody may be saved, may be healed, delivered, or set free from what it is that they're going through, oh God. And I ask that you give me preaching power even now. Touch my body, touch my mind, and guide my spirit. Oh God, drive me over, thou great Jehovah. Over God, lead me through this journey even now. In Jesus' name, we pray, we say, thank God, and amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just read Esther 4, 1 through 17 for your reading. I want to say again, happy Mother's Day weekend. 
uh, first and foremost to my wife, amen, to my baby mama, amen, First Lady Obi, amen, and then to all of those that are watching and each of you in this house, amen, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers in the house, Mother Smith, God bless you, hallelujah, Mother Johnson, I know you're watching and listening out there somewhere, hallelujah, Jesus, this is one of the most conflicted days throughout the year where many celebrate the life and legacy of their mothers, hallelujah, Jesus, uh, they celebrate the life and legacy of their mothers, and many are yet devastated from the loss of their mother. But I'm privileged and I'm honored uh, to still have my mother with me to this day. And uh, uh, if you're watching, and I know that you're watching, Mama, God bless you. Happy Mother's Day weekend to you, too. Uh, but maybe it's just me, but it seems as if boys are typically, we're always more fond of our mothers. And I know it to be true because it's been said down through the years that there's no love like a mother's love. And I believe Ezekiel's 16 and 44 even alludes to say as is the mother so is the daughter and the Bible is filled with wonderful examples of motherhood and Eve uh, she being the first woman uh, God ever created and ultimately she was the first mother and without a single role model she didn't have no mentor uh, but she paved the way of motherhood and she became the mother of all things living and Sarah the wife of Abraham we can't forget mother Sarah uh, who was the mother of the nation of Israel the chosen elect of God. Uh, Sarah was barren, but she conceived through a miracle in spite of her old age. She was a good wife to Abraham, and she was a loyal helper, and she built God's kingdom with him. And uh, her faith exemplified what it should look like when somebody comes into uh, uh, the knowledge of how to wait on God. And uh, we all know of Mary. Come on, y'all. Uh, we know Mary, the other mother of Jesus, uh, uh, who saved this world from its sins. And you young ladies, this 21 and under. Uh, uh, God bless you, Brother Peters. You can have a seat. You can be relieved at this time. Hallelujah. Thank you for your service today. Uh, Deacon Peters. Uh, that, that, that's your name. Deacon Peters. I, I, I almost forgot. Hallelujah. Young ladies, 21 and under here at KCC. Y'all better hear me in the spirit right up and through here. Uh, although Mary was young, although she was young, uh, uh, that didn't stop her from accepting the will of God over and for her life. And uh, Mary suffered from enormous shame because because they thought that she had been sneaking and creeping, hallelujah, outside of Joseph. But nevertheless, uh, yet she never doubted her son for a moment. And she never forgot and abandoned her purpose. Uh, uh, I don't care where you go to school or what you do at work or wherever you go, wherever you go, to the skating rink or whatever. Don't abandon your assignment. Don't abandon your purpose. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, as strange as it may seem, we just talked about Jesus here. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus, uh, he didn't come from the best lineage of women. Women. Uh, until his mother Mary, she arrived there on the scene. And if I can uh, 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 talk about it for a minute, I believe that his great, great, great grandmama, uh, Tamar, posed as a prostitute to deceive praise, uh, 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 also known as Judah, into giving her a son. And uh, 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 his great Grant grandmama, uh, Rahab, she was depicted as the whole turn hero. Uh, yes, Lord, she was prominent in the perfection of the promise of God towards his people. And I believe that his great granny, uh, Ruth, she came from the gutter, y'all. She was from the project. She was from the hood. It wasn't nothing good where she came from, but she was a little ratchet. She was a little rough around the edges and all of that. Uh, 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 but the Bible describes her as one who was loyal to the soil. And uh, after the devastating loss of her husband and her brother-in-law, uh, she she reached out to her Jewish mother-in-law and abandoned all that she knew to follow Naomi. And uh, she made a vow in Ruth 1 and 16, uh, which says, where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people be my people, and your God be my God. And uh, Ruth's consistency, it was compensated and caused her whole world to level up uh, when she became the wife of Brother Boaz. Uh, I want to encourage some of you ladies in here today. All you got to do is just wait on God. Uh, uh, let God be your God and let his ways be your ways and let his knowledge be all that you need to know. It, it don't matter if you're just a baby mama right now, but God is getting ready to send somebody to make you a wife. Uh, you ain't got to go playhouse with nobody. You ain't got to go lay up and make that joker's bed. 
bed and cook him no food and clip his toenails, rub his back and tell him how great and wonderful he is, God will send you what you need if you just be consistent with what he's called you to. And hallelujah, Jesus, I know y'all don't like that type of preaching, uh, but come on, look at your neighbor and say, stay in the press. Uh, uh, we got to stay in the press and there's one coming that's going to make you better. Hallelujah. You ain't got to be married to be happy. I, I, I want to clear up. You ain't got to be married to be happy. You can be happy all by yourself. And what they thought was just a sneaky link. Uh, uh, I'm talking about David's grandmama at this point. I'm talking about Sister Bathsheba. Uh, we talked about her a little bit last week. What they thought was just another sneaky link turned out uh, 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 that she was the willing side piece of King David. And, and, and she had a problem uh, uh, that she couldn't get rid of because that thing started to show. Amen. And though they hid it from man, they could not hide what they did from God. I say that again, they hid from man, but what they did, they could not hide from God. And uh, there's some things that we're doing, there's some things that we've done that we can't hide from people, uh, but maybe we can. But you, come on, everybody say, the eyes of the Lord is everywhere. Uh, the eyes of the Lord is everywhere. He see everything that you do. He hear everything you say, and he know everywhere that you go. Uh, they had a love child, and that child that became sick, and uh, 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 that child became sick unto death. And David, he all of a sudden began to take his cell phone a fast, as if that would bring the baby out. But just like some of us do when we've been raggedy, uh -huh, and we tell God, Lord, if you get me out of this, I ain't going to do it no more. Uh, you go on these fasts, and you go and throw up these bootleg love prayers and pray that God will hear you and God will deliver you. But can I help some of y'all? Y'all need to stop lying on the devil because most of what we face in life is just consequences of our own actions, of our own decisions, and our own choices. Though we should always plead for the mercy of God, stop praying for deliverance from consequences, but pray for deliverance uh, of the condition that's causing us to carry ourselves outside of the will of God. Uh, uh, but even out of all of this, God uh, allowed me to come forth and conceive our Lord and Savior Jesus who will bore the sins of this world and uh, help me preach in this place right quick just look at your neighbor and say if Jesus came from this what's your excuse uh, uh, if Jesus came out of that uh, yeah what's your excuse I feel a slim shady anointing on me right here will all the real mothers please stand up uh, after talking of all of these notable women and these mothers in the Bible uh, just for next few fleeting moments I like to encourage your hearts and minds and those of you that are on the line watching when I tell them to turn to their neighbor I need y'all to type it in the comments uh, but I want to encourage y'all prophetically as I speak from the thought a mother for such a time as this uh, can I say that again a mother for such a time as this and uh yeah y'all can take that one and put it in the comments right there a mother for such a time as this and uh we're living in the most evil in the last of days hallelujah Jesus and uh they say we need mothers for such a time as this but now in order for me to move forward into what's next you gotta know where it is that we truly do come from here within our text and in our text we have a woman by the name of Esther uh, she's the queen of Persia of uh, the young cousin of Mordecai uh she came into royalty after finessing uh King Asherius into falling in love with her at first sight after being fascinated with just how fine she was. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about how beautiful that Esther was, talks about how fine she was, caused the whole king, amen, to go ahead and marry her, caused the whole king to give her whatever it was that she wanted. Hallelujah. Mordecai warned Esther, though. Uh, he took her in as she was younger after mom and dad had died. And Mordecai told her to never reveal her identity, never let people know where you come from, never let people know that you are of Jewish descent. And uh, fast forward to Esther chapter 3. If you read it, you'll find that King of Hazareth, uh, he elevates Haman and above all the princes who were with him. And Haman was an ungodly man. And uh, God had purpose for him uh, being promoted to. But a descendant of Agog, he was king of the Amicalites, a sworn enemy of Israel, which both Mordecai and Esther derived from. And uh, seeing him promoted made Mordecai feel some type of way. 
It made them feel like some of y'all Detroiters. And if y'all got a new job and y'all went in it and y'all saw y'all boss was from the east side and you was from the west side, you you feel some type of way. And 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 and, and, and those of you that live out here on the east side, and I won't go on the west side. It's dusty over there. I I, I know how y'all talk. I done heard the conversations. Uh 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 uh. uh but 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 it's that's that's exactly how Mordecai felt. Uh, he he felt like that. Uh, uh uh he just wasn't finna bow to that. He he just ain't finna put up with that. And uh uh, uh he paid homage uh to Haman. But Mordecai wasn't in the mood to bow down to him. And uh, he wasn't going at all, y'all, to the point to where he did the very thing that he instructed his little cousin not to do. He said, uh, don't never reveal your identity. But I believe if I could use my sanctified imagination uh, real quick, I believe he said, you must not know where I'm from. You must not know who's in my bloodline. Uh, back when I was growing up in Arkansas, my uncles and my brother always told me to tell them when they get the message with you, you must not know my last name. I'm a Perry. Hallelujah, Jesus. And any time you said the word Perry, everybody back in Northeast Arkansas, they hands off. You ain't going to mess with none of Cleo's boys, amen, because I am a descendant of Cleo, but he was a descendant of the people of God, Israel, and, and, and he had to let uh, Haman know, man, I'm a Jew. I'm not finna bow to you. All my people don't whoop your people, and that's how we got to tell the devil, I'm not finna bow to you. I'm not finna go down that path. I'm not finna go down that road. I am a child of God. Come on, somebody just decree it. I am a child of God. Uh, this man, uh, this made Haman hot to the point to where he didn't want to just kill one Jew, but he wanted to kill all the Jews. And Haman then goes to King of Sazerus uh, asking a decree be written that all Jews be destroyed. And in and, and exchange for 10,000 talents of silver, that was some real money. I believe Judas, he only traded Jesus out for uh, 300 pieces of silver. Uh, but he told me, I'm going to give you 10,000 talents of silver if you kill all these folks because they are a threat to your throne. And hallelujah, Jesus. I'm I'm going to uh, add this money into the treasury after they hit me and go do what they need to do. Uh, without understanding, he was deceived based upon half-truths, uh, which are still whole lies, y'all. Uh, you better know and believe that a half-truth is still a whole lie. Uh, King of that. King of Hazarus, he agrees, and he, here we are in our text. Mordecai, uh, when he learned uh, that had uh, what had been done, he ripped his clothes to shreds, and he put on that of sackcloth and ashes. And, and then he went out in the streets of the city. He cried real loud, and he had these bitter, terrible cries, y'all. And he came only as far as the king's gate, uh, for no one uh, dressed in sackcloth and ashes was allowed to approach the king's gate. Uh, nobody was allowed to go in the king's chamber without them being properly dressed. And, ah, oh my God, I saw a word in there somewhere, but I'm going to leave that one alone today. Hallelujah, Jesus. He was at the king's gate. He wanted the king to see him. He wanted the king to hear him. I want you to see me because I got some news to give to you about my, I'm serious about my people. Come on, somebody say I'm serious about mine. Uh, I'm serious about mine. And what happened because he was at the gates, Queen Esther, uh, she got wind of what was going on with her big cuz. But she quickly tried to save faith and sent him a change of clothes out there. And uh, before her husband got wind of all that was going on, but Mordecai, he refused. And in verse 5 of our text, the Bible says that Esther called for Hatak to go to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. Uh, she wanted to know what it was and why it was. And, oh, uh, my God. God, though she was the little cousin, she was still the queen and the mother to her people. And uh, that her husband had ultimate rule over. Uh, but look at your neighbor and say she had influence with her husband. Uh, yes, Lord Jesus, you can't come to me with nothing. Amen. And don't think I'm not going to consult with my wife. Uh, I sleep with her every night. Amen. I eat with her every night. I talk to her every day. And just like Esther did, she knew that if she could intervene quietly, uh, it don't necessarily have to go all the way up to the king. Uh, uh, Esther knew that she needed to take the lead on this before her husband got involved. And like any good mother would, she needed to know what it was and why it was, which brings me to my first of three points, and I promise I'm already almost done. First thing first, ladies, you've got to learn how to lead without the need to be seen in the lead. 
I say that again. You got to learn how to lead without the need to be seen in the lead. Uh, there were many times growing up when my mama, she would ask me a question. And before I could conjure up whatever, I was finna lie and tell her, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, 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 I, 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 I would hear her quickly cut me off. And, and, and she said this out of her mouth. She said, boy, nine times out of ten, if I ask you a question, I already know the answer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Esther knew that before she went back to Mordecai, she needed to know what it was and why it was. And there was a time when women knew how uh, to lead their home and handle the business of the home while their husband were away doing what was necessary to provide for the house. And no, Pastor Obi's not trying to get y'all to go back, amen, to barefoot and cooking in the kitchen and pregnant with eight, nine kids. No, that's not my assignment today. Uh, but I, I, I come here to tell you that I want all you ladies to thrive. I want you to be independent. I want you to be successful. I want you to be bad and bougie. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want you to be a tad bit savage, bougie, ratchet. I want all of that for you. Hallelujah. But even in my own life, I want my daughter's grace and my daughter joy. Hallelujah. To be educated and dedicated to making boss moves and depending on nobody but God. Come on, everybody say nobody but God. Uh, but can, can I submit this to you today that the divine ordinance of God calls for the man to lead out in every area of life? Uh, uh, the man should be the head of every house, but it's the woman that truly leads the house. Uh, Y'all missed that one. It's the man that's the head of the house, but it's the woman who truly leads the house. And with all the money in the world and a little bit of credit, anybody can buy a house. Uh, but can I tell y'all, brother, something? Oh, my God. Uh, whenever it is that you finally find the right one, uh, it's that wife that was going to make you a home. You can go buy a house all you want, but it's the woman that's going to make you a home. Hallelujah. And one thing I remember my mama always doing was getting to the root of every matter uh, before my father ever walked in the house. And uh, because she understood she had to take the lead in necessary times in his absence. And when he walked through the door, everything that needed to be done was already done. And it was already completed. And she left nothing under done and gave my dad no excuse of why he couldn't get up and go back out and get it again. Hallelujah, God. If we look at Esther here in our text, uh, you don't have to be out front to move and shake like a boss. And uh, you don't have to be out front to run things without really running things, if that makes sense. And this is where you ask God for the wisdom uh, on how to move and how to do and how to be uh, without putting yourself in the place of that of a man. And unfortunately, in today's time, I believe over 25% of homes in the United States uh, are single parent homes, y'all. Uh, and out of that 25%, it's about 16% or better that's African American homes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, my sisters, it's not your fault, though. Uh, yeah, it's not your fault that you've been forced to lead for the last five generations or so. You've had to figure out it on, on your own. And you, you can uh, 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 go out and you can go get it. And you had to go get educated. And you had to figure out how I was going to raise these kids uh, as the prison systems begin to fill up. And as the street corners begin to fill up, amen, as the mortuary begin to fill up, hallelujah, Jesus. But can I submit to you, my sisters, don't you take no loss uh, by being caught up in trying to be a boss. i say that again. Don't you take no loss by being caught up in trying to be a boss. And uh, you don't need a man to make you happy no more than a man needs you to be happy. But I need y'all young ladies to hear me in the spirit for everything that is a time and a season. Uh, but in this season, be receptive by still yet being selected. I say that again. You got to be receptive by still yet being selective. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at your name and say it's totally acceptable to try again. Yeah, I don't know who that was for, but somebody that's watching, somebody in this room, I just want to tell you that it's totally acceptable to try again. Yeah, I see the Lord working in you. Just let him keep speaking to you. Because even like Esther, Esther tried to continue to reach in with her cousin uh, Mordecai, but he just wouldn't listen. And though his motive was good, his methods were garbage. I'll say that again. Though his motives was good, his methods were garbage. Which brings me to my next point. Men, we must listen uh, to her make mention and never mistake a woman's intuition. I'll say that again. We got to listen to her make her mentions and never mistake a woman's intuition. And I know y'all saying, ooh, talking about intuition. I'm going I'm, I'm to help y'all with something here. I'm going to learn you something right up and through here because God is the creator of all things. So come on, everybody say all things. 
uh, Mordecai, he had the right to mourn in sackcloth and ashes, uh, but his zeal was about to get him killed. Uh, uh, his, 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 his flavor for what it was that he wanted to see for his people was about to get him all the way jacked up. Uh, but I don't know how many times between my mother and this little girl over here on the left side of me uh, has intervened and said, Obi, I don't know about that one. Obi, that, that, that don't sound right. Obi, I, I don't trust her. She looked like she might want you a little bit. Uh, oh, 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 Obi, I don't, I, don't, I don't think you ought to make that investment. Oh, uh, my God, come on. Y'all y'all, listen to me. She'll tell me quick, this ain't sitting right in my shine. Now, that's her word, cold word, but that's my spirit, man, is acting up. This ain't sitting right in my shot now. And now all my life we've preached against intuition in the holiness church. And we've been taught not to lean on intuition and to lean on God, but it's God that gives us that intuition. Uh, I just believe he gave the woman a little bit more intuition than he gave the man. And intuition can be defined as a keen or a quick insight. And I believe, uh, Sister Kai and Jeremiah 17 and 10, uh, God says, I, the Lord, search the heart, and I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Y'all got to listen to me here. Y'all mind if I cheat for about 20 seconds before we hoop this thing home. Uh, the mind is translated in the Hebrew literally as the word kidneys. And if I could use my sanctified imagination today, I believe what God was saying in that text. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the guts intuition. Uh, in, in the Jewish culture at that time, the text was written uh, and, 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 and those people, they believed back then that the kidney area, which could be found in the gut, hallelujah, uh, was the source of thought. And the Latin translation for that word kidney is reins. Uh, so if I could use my sanctified imagination again, I believe what God was saying in Jeremiah right there. I, the Lord, search the heart and try the reins, the gut or the reins of a person. It refers to their inward parts. Come on, somebody say it's an inside job. He searched what's on the inside of you and the inward parts. It's the seat of your spirituality. Uh, you don't believe me? Let me give you some more Bible. Job 38 and 36 speaks to this. When it was written, who have put wisdom in the inward parts or who had given understanding to the heart. And the Hebrew translation for heart translates to the phrase, the seat of wisdom. Come on, everybody say, Lord, enlarge my seat of wisdom. Uh, it's called the seat of wisdom, and I believe it's the wisest seat in any kingdom uh, that is sat in is that of the queen's seat, uh, because she knows the heart of the king, and, and, I, and, and she can see the heart of the people. Uh, I believe it's safe to say that Esther's intuition said if her husband, King Ahasuerus, excuse me, got wind of the commotion going on outside his gates, it was showing up to be some smoke in the city. Uh, it was going to be some furniture moving. It was going to be some tables flipped over uh, because of husband wasn't having none of all of that. And, and But Esther, she decided that it was time to go back what's been proven to prevail. And uh, she went back to what she knew what would work. And look at your name and say, we've got to go back to what we know. Ah, we've got to go back to what we know. And in our text, she did what Jesus told us to do in Matthew 17 and 21. And he told us in Matthew 17 and 1, and she told every last one of them Jews, uh, oh, my God, if you're going to live to see what the Lord is going to do, some of this stuff ain't going to happen but by fasting and by prayer. Uh, she wor wor sent word out for everybody to fast and to pray. Uh, Kingdom Community Church, we're in a season of fasting and praying. Uh, there's some stuff that I need the Lord to do, amen. There's some stuff that I I want to see done here in this ministry that ain't going to happen, but unless we fast and we pray. I can do it by myself. She can do it by herself. We can do it together, but it's so much better when we corporately do it as one. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody say one body. Yes, Lord, he didn't create two churches. He didn't create the leadership part of the church. He didn't create the laity part of the church. He created one body that we all may be strengthened together. Can I let y'all know something, Kingdom Community, as a former athlete, I'll tell you, your team is only as strong as your weakest link. And, 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 and if you don't got no prayer life, if you can't get on this fast with us and press through and persevere, hey amen, you're causing something to be able to creep in on your end. We want to make sure we're all strengthened. We want to make sure that we're all ready to fight this fight. Uh, because just like Mordecai said, I'm a Jew. Huh? I'm a child of 
God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And if you're going to be a child of God with me, amen, you got to do what we do over here. Hallelujah. So it's time for us to grow in God with the understanding that mama ain't always right, that daddy won't be here all your life. Uh, but whatever you need in this hour, it's got to come from another place. Uh, come on, look at your neighbor and say it's got to come from another place. Uh, Mordecai acted boldly. Mike, I'm about ready to close right here. He had a Proverbs 28 and 1 mentality, which reminds us that the wicked, uh, they flee when no man pursueth. Uh, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And uh, he knew that this thing had gotten serious because his cousin took uh, 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 in the, as, as, as one of the own children. Hallelujah, Jesus. He couldn't even be seen talking to her outside due to the danger that was put upon his life. And in our text, Esther uh, sent multiple warnings to Mordecai that she didn't have to have a grip on what was happening. Hallelujah. In verse 11 of our text, she told him that she had not been called in to see the king for about 30 days. And uh, she had no insight, but here she was engaging in her intuition. And uh, she was stuck between a rock and she was stuck between a hard place. Uh, come on in with power. She had to choose between blood or love. Hallelujah, Jesus. And though she was scared for her family, Mordecai didn't seem to be shaken one bit. Uh, Mordecai stood on his word. And uh, Mordecai, he still began to cry out. And Mordecai began to reach out to God uh, the best way that he knew how uh, in front of the king's gate. Uh, he was in sackcloth and ashes. And, and I believe that he remembered that of Deuteronomy 31 and 6, uh, which tells us to be strong and of good courage and fear not nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, I said the Lord your God, uh, he it is uh, that does go out with us. Uh, he won't fail us and he won't forsake us. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, so it was about this time, uh, Mordecai had to remind Queen Esther of who she was uh, and exactly who she was. Uh, yes, you're the wife of King Ahasuerus, uh, but don't you think that you're going to escape uh, the fate of all the Jews? Uh, because you, when you look in the mirror, you're still yet a Jew. Uh, you may dress up in different kind of clothes, uh, but you're still a child of God. Uh, you may go to places you ain't supposed to go, uh, but you're still a child of God. Uh, you can go off across the country, but you're still a child of God. And I want to let you know today that it don't matter where you've been and it don't matter where you're going. Nobody's exempt uh, from what the people of God got to go through. You're going to go through some stuff, but God is still yet a deliverer. Hallelujah, Jesus. She couldn't escape because she was sitting in the king's palace. You and your family, y'all going to die if you don't go talk to them. Y'all going to go die if you don't be obedient. Hallelujah, Jesus. But you better know that and understand that if you keep silent in this time where we need you, relief and deliverance uh, is going to come to my people and it's going to come from another place. Uh, come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you need, but where you're looking for is coming from another place. Uh, if you need healing in your body, it ain't going to be in the weed. Uh, it ain't going to be in the pills. Uh, it ain't going to be in the doctor's opinion. Uh, tell somebody that it's coming from another place. Uh, if you need deliverance, son, your mama can't save you. Your daddy can't save you. Your money can't save you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Come on. Oh, neighbor. It's coming from another place. Hallelujah, Jesus. What I need in this season is coming from another place. Uh, my wife can't give it to me. My daddy can't cash up it to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, that dope can't make me feel like it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, it's got to come from another place. Uh, the place of fasting. Uh, the place of prayer. The place of seeking. Uh, for this is the generation of those of us that seek the Lord. Uh, says God. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, turn up your seat. Uh, I said turn up your seat. Uh, 
Come on, I need some believers uh, to turn up your seat, uh, even right here in this place. Uh, all you got to do is hold your peace uh, and let the Lord fight your battles uh, because your victory is coming from another place. Uh, Jesus said, if you shall ask anything, uh, ask anything in my name, uh, whatever you need, it's yours. Uh, all you got to do is ask me for it. All you got to do is ask, and you shall receive. If you begin to knock, that door is going to open to you. Can I remind you, KCC, this is still the year of the open door. We decreed it in January. Michael Peters, get ready to experience the open door. You're going to pass that text. Sister Akaya, this your open door. Not one, but two, but three opportunities. This is your season, and this is your time, and you better know that God is coming, and he's going to show up, and he's giving it to you from another place. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's Psalm 37 and 5 that tells us to commit our way unto the Lord and trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. For this is still the year of the open door. Hallelujah, Jesus. KCC, you better hang on to that word. We shall continue to look up to the hills from where all of our help, where all of our help's coming from. And we know that our help, come on, somebody make a person who say, my help, say, all my help is coming from the Lord. Lean on your neighbor and say, help is on the way. And it's coming from another place. Sir. Come on and lift up your voice. Sir. And thank God for the other place. may not have needed nothing from God, but everything that I need is coming from another place. God says you got to quit looking in the same spot. You got to move where I tell you to move. Some of y'all have been in relationships and situationships. You've been in circumstances. You've been in ministries and churches. I'm going to pause right there. You've been in places that God is no longer there. You're in places that you're not, not even assigned to be in. You're in entanglements and relationships that God has said, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. What you're looking for fulfillment from, God says, I got it for you already, but it's in another place. But this is the time, this is the season that we need mothers in Zion like never before. We need mothers for such a time as this. I know on this Mother's Day weekend, we're going to go see our mama. We're going to go to church with them. And some of them, that's the only time we're going to go to church throughout the year. Hallelujah. We're going to go Mother's Day, Christmas, and Easter every year. CME Saints, Christmas, Mother Day, and Easter. Hallelujah. And we ain't going to see nothing about you no more. We ain't going to hear nothing from you no more. Hallelujah. Mama's still going to be in place. But it's some of you mothers out there, let me encourage you right here. Your kids got to see a better example. Because the way you've been doing it and the way that you're expecting God to move, God has told me to tell everybody in here today, it's coming from another place. The same way that you roll out the bed, Lord, I thank you for the day, God. I thank you for another day. Good. Lord, give me strength today. Bless me with a million dollars. Amen. He's not in that place no more because he expects more out of you. It's time for us to come off the milk and start drinking of the sincere milk of the word. He wants to graduate you from the milk to the meat. My son, BJ, he'll drink a bottle. I'm talking about he'll drink 20 ounces if you let him. The boy can eat. One years old, big boy. Starting to walk a little bit, talk a little bit, do his thing. 
and eat all the grains and vegetables and fruit you wish, but he will not eat you. The revelation in that is this. He's one year old. What's your excuse? His stomach isn't even conditioned to receive meat the way he receives it. But you've been in church, you've been around the word of God, you've been in ministry all this time. But you still won't do more than what you've been doing. Your deliverance ain't in a child's place no more. Some of y'all got this baby-like mentality. Auntie this and uncle that and dad this and mama that. Everybody in, the, you got 30 uncles, you got 50 aunties, you got four daddies, and then you got 100 mamas. It's time for you to be the mother that you were called to be. You ain't got, I, and, 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 uh, for the sake of them taking my cord cross and collar, uh, uh, in, in the sanctified church, we like to make mothers when they're 60 and 70 and 80 years old. If you can conceive a child at 16 and 17 and 18, then why aren't we raising you up when you're 8, 10, and 12 so you're in position and posture at 20 and 30 to mother the young ladies that's coming behind you? Don't think this is just for the women, my brothers. It's time for us to step up into our rightful place because there's too many mothers out here leading when we as the men should be in the forefront. We wonder why we got so many gays and so many homosexual feminine men because they used to seeing the mothers wave their hands a certain way and then you got little Johnny over here waving and fanning and then, then we want to put them up over the quiet. We walk by faith but not by sight but we can't help what we see. What you see desensitizes you to what it is that's really around you. If every day I see this girl looking fine as she is, and she fine now, sometimes I can get in a place where I take it for granted that I don't tell her thank you for good until I hear one of them no good Negroes on the corner. Hey, girl, what's up now? Why, what you doing? But I become desensitized to the beauty of what God has blessed me with. And sometimes I can forget to say things and I can forget to do the little things to keep her engaged, to keep us engaged, to keep me engaged. Hallelujah. And what happens is, is when you desensitize yourself from seeing certain things, like the move of God, you don't even know how to respond adequately when it hits the house. You don't know how to respond to his presence when it begins to rest on you because you've seen and, 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 and you, you've you heard and you've been around Bishop this and you've been around supervisor that you've been around all these great men and women of God, but you don't even know how to respond to God when he's speaking to you. You don't even know his voice no more because you're so used to church and you ain't used to doing the work to get in his word no more. Build your own faith up. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is why this path to Pentecost is super serious. It's imperative that we all be refilled with the Spirit of God, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We need Jesus. Come on, somebody just make a person and say, I need Jesus. I need more of Jesus right now. And the way that we're used to experiencing God, hallelujah, Jesus, we become so desensitized to it, and we're trying to go back to doing the same stuff we was doing before pandemic. I'm not coming to 30 district meetings. I'm not coming to 30 teas and lunches. I'm, I'm not paying all this SS extra money for y'all to just go pay somebody else that got another position higher than yours. I know they're going to be mad when they see this now. I'm done. That's all right. God got me, God. God got me. But I tell the truth and shame the devil, and it's the same way. Don't think this is a leadership thing because you got your own personal responsibility in this. God is calling you to another place. And he needs each and every one of you for such a time as this. The time that you're living in, the time that you're here, the time that you're breathing, the time that you have to get it right, the time that you have to serve with all of your might. One day you're going to be as, as seasoned as Mother O'Banner. You might not be able to move the way you used to move. You might not be able to go the way you used to go and run. While you're still yet young, you need to make sure that them legs is ready to, to, and willing to go to do and to be. But the Lord
longer you stay outside of God's will, the longer that you stay stuck and stagnant in that stale place, that place where you're not growing, that place where you don't find yourself uh, being fruitful, the place that you find yourself not being used. You used to coming in and sit down because that's all they would let you do. As long as you gave your money, amen, we would acknowledge you, but that's all we're going to do. God has need of you for such a time as this. Esther didn't have to be the one in the lead. She knew how to secretly and privately go in and out of every place using wisdom on how to get what she needed to know so she could orchestrate and gather the people and put them in a place and position and posture to where we can seek God as one. If I die in the process, so what? But I'm going to go talk to the king. The king says he wants to talk to you today, though. God says that he's tired of sitting and bullying your life away. I didn't create you to be a secondary option. I didn't create you to be stagnant. I didn't create you to be stuck. But I created you that I may be able to get glory out of your story. God is ready to get the glory out of your life today, but you got to be ready to move in God's time. Everybody just say God's time is now. No more delay. No more delay. You've sold procrastination long enough. But this is not the season to reap delay. Because you're going to miss the move. Let's put down the forms. Hallelujah. And pick up some real power. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to receive him today and begin to move and do and live for Jesus. If you're outside of the ark of safety and maybe you haven't lived the life that you're supposed to be living, I want you to come to this altar, rededicate yourself to God right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, don't let your feet become uh, uh, stuck. Don't let your feet become standing. Move swiftly out into the house. Come up here. Let's pray. You can repent. You ain't got to say nothing to me, but go ahead and talk to God because he got something to tell you today. Maybe none of that applies to you. Maybe you say, Pastor, I, I, I just need to get back in the race and I, I just need some encouragement. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray these shackles and these bonds and these chains up off of me that God may be able to use me and, 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 and he can be glorified in my life. I need you to come. I need you to come. Come on. It's all right. Zion is calling you to a higher place. you to come. I want you to come. Come on. If you're battling any addiction, I want you to come. If you're battling any type of heartache, I need you to come. Come on. Don't wait. Don't delay. Come on. Zion is calling. calling you, come on, to a higher place.
Can we begin to thank God for the soul that was just saved in this household today? I said, can we begin to thank God for the soul that was just saved in this house? This young man just gave his life to Christ. His folks on this altar getting ready to get delivered, getting ready to be made free. Hallelujah, Jesus. And y'all, I know we on this path to Pentecost, but if you want to be filled with the Spirit of God right now, come on, you can come even now. I believe God will move according to your faith. If you're ready, come on. Get to this altar and begin to cry out. Get to this altar and begin to lift your voice. Get to this altar and begin to tell God what you need him to do for you. Ask him to fill you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. He can, he will, and he can do all things. God can do anything but fail. He can do anything but lie and die in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying right there. Come on. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Hallelujah. Come on, don't stop praying. Come on, breakthrough is happening on this altar right now. I need every believer in here beginning to intercede. I need every believer in here praying right now. Come on, if you ain't got faith that it can happen, I need you to politely remove yourself. You can be dismissed. But if you got the faith of a mustard seed, I need you to open up your mouth. She came to get free today. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom and liberation in Jesus' name. No more chains. No more bondage. No more back and forth. Y'all not no more back and you won't go back to that place. <laughs> you won't go back to that place. Suicide won't have you. Depression won't have you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, aneurysms and heart attacks won't have you. I even speak to your health. Everything is out of alignment. Uh, we say it shall come back in order, in divine alignment, in Jesus. Come on. Come on. I need your praying. I need you praying and I need somebody praising. I need you praying and I need somebody praising. Hey! Shanaba! Deliverance in Jesus' name. Deliverance in Jesus' name. Ayada, let it go. And God says, don't you pick it back up and now another day. Don't you pick it up no more. Come on, you're feeling real light right now. Wow. God says that he's releasing that thing apart for you. Lift in Jesus' name. Lift in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. From up over your head, it shall not be. From up over your head, it will not remain. From up over your head, even that cause the headaches and the migraines. God says he's delivering you now. You're not going to.
going to die in your sleep. You're not going to choke. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. But that thing is lifting even now. Uh, it's breaking right now. Now, uh, come on, I need you praying, folks. I need you praying, saints. Uh, that thing is coming up off of your shoulders. Uh, that thing is coming up off of your back. Uh, in the name of Jesus. How y'all know that they do? Do it for a Lord. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah, God. Break every chain. Break, 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 break. Come on, somebody holler, break. Break in Jesus' name. He's giving you a fresh wind. He's giving you a fresh wind. He says that your desire to live is coming back. Your desire to press on is coming back. Right. And depression won't have you another day. You won't get in your own thoughts no more. God says that you ain't got to worry about it. What God has shown you, he's going to give you a better way. I hear the Lord speaking right now. He says that your thoughts is going to be purified from this time forth. You ain't got to worry about what you saw in your mother. You ain't got to worry about what you saw in your family. You ain't got to worry about it no more. You can rest easy that the anointing on your life. Uh, you had to go through this stuff. Uh, you had to go through some stuff, hallelujah, to get what God has for you in this season. And he says that you are different. You are not the same. You're not like them, so you can't hang with them. Your interest is even changing. The taste, the taste for what you've indulged in uh, is coming up out of your mouth. Uh, in the name of Jesus, you won't like it. You won't indulge in it. That thing is coming out, and you won't go back. You shall not go back. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, the devil want to pervert your gift. The enemy wants to cause your gift to be used for his glory. But God says, not this one. Come on, somebody say, not this one. God says, not this one. Not this one. This one is mine. This one is precious. This one is special. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Pray her through. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. God, are you free? Come on. Just keep telling the enemy. Because he's saying you're going to go back. Come on. Don't let him creep back in your mind. Keep on pressing through. Tell the devil, I am free. I am free. Whom the Lord has made free is free indeed. I got up. I said. You're free. You're already free. Come here, Mother. Come here, Mother Benny. Come here, Mother. God told me to tell you that what's working, he's going to use you to increase somebody else's thing. From the way that the Lord is getting ready to turn this thing around in you. God says he's about to take it away. That you may be a living testimony. You got to live to see this one happen. Death will not have you. Cancer will not have you. Your bloodstream will be clean. He's giving you a blood transfusion now. When you took the communion today, God told me to tell you. That blood is going to transfuse in your body. That the body that was broken uh, is breaking the sickness. It's breaking every disease. It's breaking every curse that's been spoken over you. In Jesus' name. I feel all right. I feel all right. God is moving. And he's not finished yet. God is moving. And he's going to move even online. He's going to move in your home. Sir. He's going to move in your job. He wants me to remind you that what you're looking for is coming from another place. Sir. I don't care which way you turn. I don't care which way you look. God wants me to tell you that it's coming from another place. His ear is attentive. His eyes is open. Go pray for a kite. Touch her, touch her mind. Touch her body. 
Weariness won't take you out. Nope. Stay in the press. Stay in the press. Don't you fall back. Stay in the press. Don't you fall back. Stay in the press. That word this morning was for you. Stay in the press. Nevertheless, I press. Stay in the press. Hallelujah, Jesus. Strengthen her body even now. In Jesus' name. Ayanabasi. Oh, God, touch her mind. We plead the blood of Jesus over her mind. We plead the blood of Jesus over her heart. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. In Jesus' name. Ayanabasi. Oh, Shana. Come on, that's it. God, release it. Release it. Release it. Release it. He's giving you the power to say no. He's giving you the power to walk away. He's giving you the power to sever your ties. In Jesus' name. Come on. Raise your praise in this house. Just because it didn't come when you thought it should have come. God says, keep pressing. God says, stay in the race. You're not going and sowing for nothing. God is going to yield great results in you. Get ready to see some new results. Get ready to see something different. Get ready to see it in your prayer life. Get ready to see it in your seek life. Get ready to see it. He wants your belief before he can allow you to see it. He wants your belief to increase before he allow you to see it. Because he's going to show you much more. I see wealth coming to your hands, sir. God says before he can trust you with the money, he got to be able to trust you in the moment. Will you still press even when you don't see me working? Will you still press even when it don't feel like it? Will you still yet press? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. A refreshing is coming to your house. Hear me in the spirit. A refreshing is coming to your house, sir. God said this ain't by happenstance, sir. He didn't allow us to meet. He didn't allow us to connect for happenstance, sir. But just like Haman had a purpose, my brother, this is a purpose right here. Your house is getting ready to get refreshed. It's already blessed, but God says there's a refreshing that needs to take place. Sir. It's a start over. It's a do over. It's a reset that's getting ready to be released sir. in Jesus' name. Come on. Lift your hands and receive it even now. And God says as you begin to glorify me from where you are, God says I'm going to not only show you what I showed you today, not only show you what I showed you yesterday, not only show you what you saw, but get ready to see what eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, the things in which God has in store for you. Get ready for the refreshing. I dare you to begin to bless God for the refreshing in this house. I dare you to begin to celebrate for the refreshing in this house, sir. It ain't falling on one, but it's falling on everybody.
people, he's refreshing your house. He's refreshing your mind. Come on, I know we ain't got much room in here, but I need you to bless God for about 30 seconds right here. Everybody praise him. Hallelujah, Chief. This is a victorious house. That's it, son. That's it, Mother Drew. Out of the mouth, babes will be praise will be perfect. If y'all gonna do it, let's go ahead and do it together. Everybody say, oh. Clap those hands. Clap those hands. Clap those hands. That's it, Kendra. Breaking even now. Pentecost has hit the house. Pentecost has hit the house. Those of you that are watching, we thank God for you. You can join us here at 223 North Walnut Street in the big city of Mount Clemens, Michigan. We are Macomb County's premier Pentecostal experience. If you need deliverance, get to the house. We need salvation and breakthrough. Get to the house. Join us next week, 5 p.m., 223 North Walnut Street. Don't forget to sow your seed. You see the giving prompts on the screen? The Lord is doing a new thing in here. We're going to get the money a little later, but we're going to bless God right now. That thing is breaking up off of you, baby. That's it, daughter. Praise him. 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 Praise his name. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name.